Hello, welcome to this video series on takeaways and tips from the experts based on the Joint Incentive Travel Study. I'm Mike May, President of Brightspot. Here we go. This Incentive Travel Index Study was conducted by SITE, IRF, and FICP. The three of those came together where they'd previously done separate studies and conducted the largest ever study of the incentive industry. So first they looked at budget. And in the area of the number of winners, there's a four year trend of companies increasing their winners. That doesn't mean a 50% increase in winners, but companies, 50% of all companies are increasing their winners. My suggestion would be add more beds to ensure that your qualifiers are keeping pace with headcount growth from the strong economy and mergers and acquisitions. Budget, 54% of buyers say their budget increased. The median spend is 4,000. I think that figure's a little misleading. I think the mean average of corporate at 8,151 per person, which is kind of a, a very big number, is a little bit high because finance and insurance normally do really nice trips. The better benchmark is that incentive agency average at 5,193. My tip for you would be get more money. Tell the CFO to find more budget because as we know, costs are going up. Speaking of costs going up, buyers are striving to reduce costs year over year. And that's because while budgets are increasing, costs are increasing at a faster rate. My tip would be to make a pie chart of your budget to evaluate the categories, their allocation and priority to see if you're spending money where you really prioritize it according to your goals and objectives. The business impact of trips. The most positive impacting factors that are driving uh, people to do trips are executive management perception, and secondly, company financial forecasts. I think the yin and yang of a subjective factor and an objective factor is interesting, as well as it's good to see that optimism remains high about the economy. Those factors with a negative impact are primarily terrorism or concerns about the micro economy. My tip would be pray for peace. Uh, terrorism hurts this industry. Uh, peace does good things for travel. The most important objectives as to why companies are doing incentive travel are really what we'd expect. Increased sales and profitability are number one. But I think it's fascinating that the soft benefits, which are the bottom six in this list, such as relationship building between management and employees, relationship building amongst peers, engagement, customer satisfaction, training. I think if that list was shorter, soft benefits would probably rank even higher. My tip would be hug and chat, meaning, well, don't hug, but shake hands and increase your focus on good quality networking within your programs. Frequency of tracking ROI. This is always a hot topic, but what the stats show is only 25% of companies are actually tracking ROI. The reasons management doesn't require it or the program is already entrenched in the culture. So my tip here would be still tell the cultural grapevine or, or the water cooler in your company so that you are socializing your sales success stories and still track sales KPIs to try to correlate that to an ROO, return on objectives of your incentive trip. Inclusions in the trip. Wellness is up. It's a big, big uh, increase in that category. Event apps are up, but what's down is CSR. Kind of interesting. It's a little bit like ROI. gets talked about it a lot, but we're starting to see a little bit of a decline. My tip, do more yoga, which in a serious note, I mean increase wellness. And also, if you're not already doing it, add an event app. In the area of logistics, a common question is, uh, should we include a meeting? Interestingly, corporate users do it at a higher rate than incentive companies. I believe, again, that's the influence of finance and insurance companies that tend to include meetings. Business reasons as a top cause mean things like training, communication, or brand promotion, but also regulations can be a driving reason. Or uh, tax laws, meaning you don't want the trip to be taxable to the participants as a reason to make it into a business meeting. My tip would be ask yourself, why are we here? Determine the priority of it being of the trip being a recognition reward versus a business meeting. 
Last thing, when it gets to destination selection and the considerations for selecting a destination, as we might guess, appeal or podium power is high. Safety is important as well as value for the dollar. My tip is remember that this is not the CEO's trip. Think about what's going to entice the target audience, not what's going to motivate the CEO, the sales VP, or the event planner. Easy to say, can be hard to do, but it's good to focus on what your goals and who your audience is. So summary takeaways, budgets are increasing, costs are going up at a faster rate, so people are working on reducing costs. Make sure your winners are growing at the same rate your headcount is. Those soft benefits are still high. And uh, while CSR's SR is declining a bit, wellness is up. So my name's Mike May. I'm, I'm at Brightspot. If I can help with any specific questions, please feel free to email me. I hope this was helpful to you. Have a great day.